In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, God's good people, and welcome to this new week. We are in the third week of Lent, Church Year 8. Today is Monday, the 16th of March, 2020. You are listening to Catholic Meditation with me, Father Blessed Ambang Njume. Catholic Meditation is brought to you by the Communications Service of the Diocese of Kumba, Cameroon. Thanks for joining us. Let us pray. May your unfailing compassion, O Lord, cleanse and protect your church, and since without you she cannot stand secure, may she be always governed by your grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. First reading from the second book of Kings, chapter 5, verses 1 to 15. The Gospel from St. Luke, chapter 4, verses 24 to 30. I read from the first reading. In those days, Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and in high favor, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. Now, the Syrians on one of their raids had carried off a little maid from the land of Israel, and she waited on Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, Would that my lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. So Naaman went in and told his lord, Thus and so spoke the maiden from the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he went, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten festal garments. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, When this letter reaches you, know that I have sent to you Naaman my servant, that you may cure him of his leprosy. And when the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive, that this man sent word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Only consider and see how he is seeking a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come now to me, that he may know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman was angry and went away, saying, Behold, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and cure the leper. Are not Abana and Fafa, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. But his servants came near and said to him, My father, if the prophet had commanded you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much rather then, when he says to you, wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God, and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Then he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and he came and stood before him, and he said, Behold, I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
it is all vanity and nothingness. It is all vanity and nothingness. Dear friends, today's first reading teaches us the vanity and emptiness of who we are. A human being is nothing regardless of who they are or what they own. It is just a matter of breath. Take it away from us and we are nothing. Vanity. It matters not who you are or what you are. Knowing this and being aware of it, we should therefore not cling much to these but relate well with others, even those not of our class. Your class, your position, your wealth, your power, even life, all these, beloved, are vanity, nothing. The reading narrates the story of Naaman, a general of the army of Syria and a great man, general of the king of Syria. He was rich, valiant and had great honor, but all these were vanity and meant nothing because he was suffering from leprosy. This disease made him see the emptiness and vanity of himself, of the power and the glory he had, what he owned and who he was. Not even his money, not his fame, not his position or honor could save him. What was Naaman or who was Naaman with leprosy, despite the money, the power, the glory and the honor? As was the case with all leprous persons, he was to be isolated, quarantined and considered unclean. Imagine great Naaman to be considered unclean. He could not believe it. This troubled him. Dear friends, we are all vanity. Visit the mortuary and see what happens to corpses. Vanity. This moment we are here speaking, commanding power and honor and respect and the next second, some other person in the mortuary is toasting the body left, right, center and we cannot even utter a word. Not even our money, power or position can stop us from dying. What Naaman went through is a big lesson for us all. We can also be helpless and dependent on others. What is more, it was a maid, a maid, a house girl. It was the maid of Naaman's wife who gave him advice to go see the prophet in Israel who later healed him. Not even his great officers could give him such advice. Who could ever believe that the low-class maid knew the solution to Naaman's predicament? She was just a maid. But the great army general's help came from the advice of the maid. No one, beloved, is too great or independent. We realize this great lesson even more in times of sickness and death. Sickness has no respect for age or class. See how helpless we become when we are sick. At death, we become even the more helpless. Others will do everything for us. We will have no choice or a voice to command. Where shall all the authority, power, fame, money and class be? All is vanity. What are the lessons then? First, See the emptiness and nothingness of this life. These things will never save us. See how helpless Naaman was in the face of sickness. Not even his military prowess could save him, nor his wealth. We are told he was thinking of carrying gold and all kinds of gifts to the king of Israel. But all those things were not needed. They could not save him. Some of us, beloved, are too full of ourselves. We move around with an air of importance and pride and superiority and we not even as much as take notice of those around us or offer them a greeting. We think that the world begins with us and ends with us. Oh, calm down your high horses. Life does not begin with you and end with you. So do not be too serious with yourself. Learn to relate with people because even that one you pass by may just be the one you need all your help from. Second, 
life without God is wasted. It was the prophet of God who saved him, showing the value and important place we need to give to God in our lives. All will always fail, but God will never fail. Third, beloved, never disregard or underlook anyone because of who you are or what you own or because of who they are. It was a maid, a house girl who helped Naaman with advice. You will not take yourself to the mortuary or bury yourself. Therefore, relate well with people. Stop making enemies for yourself. That one you push away may just be that good Samaritan coming by when you need help the most. The greatest treasure to have is people. Love them. Be there for them. You never know in whose hands you will breathe your last. Assist them in the most you can and they will be found among your jewels when you reach the better land. Assignment for today. Today, beloved, as you move around, give that your pretty smile to all. Give a lovely and cheerful greeting to all, even that cleaner. Do not pass by that one who needs your help. Listen to all who give you good advice and give respect to all, even that your maid or even that gatekeeper. Because you never know from where your help will come. You never know who God will use to bring your blessing. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come on you and remain with you forever. Amen. We wish each and every one of you a blessed week.